Well, here we are at the end of season two with its ups and downs. For some, season two of The Office is one of the best seasons of television of all time. And in this season, we see what the real focus of this show is, the relationships. Season two is comprised of 22 episodes directed by a combination of seven unique directors and 10 unique head writers. So let's dive right in to see what made season two so good. No one uh, asked you anything ever? First up, the show had a complete makeover. Season one leaned into the cringe in the same way the original British version did. And I'll be honest, cringe humor just isn't my thing. I don't get it. Am I supposed to be feeling very awkward? So much that I'm intended to laugh as a way to medicate my shaky comfort level? Regardless, with Steve Carell's sudden star power, thanks to 40-year-old Virgin, NBC all of a sudden had a movie star under contract for one of their primetime television shows. With this, the studio began to make some demands after ordering the first six episodes of season two, with two main rules. Carell couldn't be the villain of the series, and each episode needed to end with an inkling of hope. This is how Michael Scott moved from this I'm Hitler! Adolf Hitler! <laughs> to this. Michael has his moments of awfulness in season two. Ryan! 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 But we tend to be able to easily see through that facade to see what makes him tick. And Michael Scott didn't just have a personality makeover, Carell also had lost some weight for the 40-year-old version, so Daniels opted to lean into that to give Carell a less greasy used car salesman look. And sorry if that's offensive if you're a used car salesman, but moving on. Another key element in this makeover was the office itself. Season one was shot in a real office building. Season two and onward were shot in a soundstage on NBC's backlot, except for the various times they went on location. Pam, you are Marianne. It's fast, it's efficient, get you there on time. It's a way to, okay, here's a guy pooping in a cardboard box down there. Blood alone moves the wheels of history. And with the soundstage, the lighting vastly improved. And while that sounds minor, walk into a poorly lit room and try to feel hopeful or optimistic. Lighting is a really big deal and it can make a major difference. Hashtag lighting matters. And to captivate a larger audience, NBC moved The Office to Thursday night as part of their must-see TV lineup. So with this new makeover in place and six episodes ordered, Daniels and team wrote up the Dundies, Sexual Harassment, Office Olympics, The Fire, The Halloween Episode, and The Fight. Kicking right off in the season premiere, the show was huge and the rest of the season was ordered very soon after. So what resonated so well with the audience? Well, for that, let's move over to the deeper meaning. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? As with most episodes of season two, The Office works on two levels. On the surface, it's about the in-your-face craziness that Michael Scott pulls as the regional manager of Dunder Mifflin Scranton. Under that is the nuanced, realistic portrayal of humans in the American workplace. And while that statement could ring true for the entire series, there's something very pure about season two. And it's my belief that this realism nestled within the Jim Pam plotline is what resonated so well with audiences. Not many of us work at a mid-range regional paper company in Pennsylvania. I mean, I guess someone who's watching this might work there. That person's probably freaking out right now. Regardless, even if all the parameters aren't the same, all of us know a Kevin, a Stanley, a Ryan, an Angela, a Phyllis, and whomever else. Even the Jim Pam plotline feels so real and relatable, we just get it. In this season, we get a vision set for what our corner of the world could be like. <laughs> and we get to live vicariously through these characters to experience some truly gut-punchingly awful moments. Wow. Who opened the morgue for this thing? I was just driving by, I thought I'd drop in. There's some wine. I would love a glass if you're gonna open it. And in a way, that's life. In a single day, we can experience high highs and low lows. And before The Office became The Office, 
Season two has all the ingredients of what is genius about The Office, but I'll get to that later. And there are a lot of messages in season two, but I'll pick the one that I think resonates the most clearly. Coming from Dundee's all the way through to Casino Night, I believe the resonating message is, take your shots when you get them. The amount of silence and unspoken messages is a reoccurring motif throughout this entire season. What? Nothing. Okay. What? I don't know. What? <laughs> and this is a card. Because Christmas is the time to tell people how you feel. It's incredible. Is this the boggle timer? I didn't think you were gonna get that one. I really did that. Sometimes I just don't get Roy. Jim, you can tell me anything. Culminating finally to this moment. I was just, um... I'm in love with you. What? I love this show. But with that, let's give out some awards. And then I gotta get him to the Dundies. Okay, I asked on Facebook these questions. Let's dish out some Dundies. First up, the most cringy scene in season two. The nominees are Jim, put me down. Oh my God, hey, put me down. Michael's Fundle Bundle Tape. hundred friends, and no one can say no to being my friend. Uh. Michael crashes the barbecue. Karaoke, I love it. I am a karaoke fiend. I call dibs, I got next, I got next up. Michael crosses the line. I'm worried about getting a boner. Good work today, everybody. And the breakup. Wrong with you. Why did you even bring me here tonight? I don't know. Let's break up. Whoa, what? All right, and the most cringy scene of season two goes to Fundle Bundle. I said it best in that field guide. This moment hits me in the gut with the force of a thousand cringy sons. Michael's forced in this moment to realize that he did not grow up to be who he wanted to be. Well-deserved, Fundle Bundle. I still had a blast with that Jay Callender interview. Check that one out after this video. All right, the next award. The best cold opening of season two. The nominees are The Exercise Ball. The IT Guy. Called him. What? The IT Tech Guy and me did not get off to a great start. The what's up dog. What's up dog? Gotcha! Oh god. Boys being boys. You all right, Ryan? Ryan. Yeah. Pam! The pyramid. I have to go make a call. And the Casino Night Telepathy. Oh my God. And the winner for the best cold opening of season two goes to Boys Being Boys. It gets me every single time this punchline hits spot on. All right, we're cruising right away. These award shows go by super quick if no one is there to accept the awards and the awards aren't real. All right, next up, the most heartwarming moment of season two. The nominees are the award ceremony. Right. Slow dancing. Completing the harmony. Oh, it 
tender love is blind. It requires a dedication. The teapot. No, I was just um, checking out my present. But I traded with Dwight. Michael gets invited somewhere. Who's in? I'm in. Yes. Michael? Poor Richards? Yeah, that sounds good. Christmas is awesome. And the kiss. Listen, Jim. And the winner is the award ceremony. It's so good. And Michael tears up at the end. It's just amazing. All right, let's go negative for this one. The worst episode of season two. Nominees are The Fire. Maybe we should get some air. Oh, I'm okay. I'm really uncomfortable. The Fight. The Michael is all cursive, Scott all caps, left brain, right brain, or duality of man. Could you practice on the form? Performance review. We're learning and we're figuring some stuff out. You need to do something about your coffee breath. Okay. You need to no, do something shut about up, your... Shut up, shut up, shut up, Dwight. Okay. Booze Cruise. <laughs> Michael's birthday. Hello, what about the birthday boy? Haven't had a hug all day. <laughs> no one cares about your birthday. Or conflict resolution. That'll be another 20. What? Angela, I'm going to talk button. to you about something. What? No, Pam. I am. It's about to save the date. Damn, it wasn't her. What? And the loser is Conflict Resolution. I don't like it. While other episodes have portions or reasons why I'm not a fan of them, the Conflict Resolution episode is basically the definition of a filler episode. There's one good moment in that episode, and it's in a nomination coming up soon. Overall, I'm just not a fan of this episode. But let's bring it back in the positive. The funniest bits of season two. Nominees are Jim Dwight, Unfilmed Pranks. This morning I found a bloody glove in my desk drawer and Jim Halpert tried to convince me I committed murder. I think he may be the real murderer. Ryan started the fire. Joe McCarthy, Richard Nixon, Studebaker Television, North Korea, South Korea, Marilyn Monroe. Ryan started the fire. Michael's grilled foot. Glean bacon. It is delicious, it's good for me, it's a perfect way to start the day. Today I got up, I stepped onto the grill and I clamped down on my foot. The casino night killing field. Afghani. That's a dog. No, that's Afghan. That's a shawl. Wait, canine AIDS? No, humans with AIDS. Who has AIDS? Guys, the Afghanistan nannies. The Jim Dwight interrogation. Knock it off, okay? I'm interviewing you. No, you said that I'd be conducting the interview when I walked in here. Now exactly how much pot did you smoke? And the threat level midnight table read. Sam. Get my luggage. I forget it, brother. Samuel, you are such an idiot. You are the worst assistant ever. And you're disgusting. Twigged. And the winner of the funniest bit of season two is the Jim Dwight unfilmed pranks. See, it goes to show that even the worst episode of the season can still have nuggets of exceptional in it. And for the big one, the best episode of season two. The nominees are the Dundies. This premiere kicked off the new heart of the show. Tonight is the Dundies, the annual employee awards night here at Dunder Mifflin, and this is everybody's favorite day. Office Olympics. This episode introduced us to a lot of characters and had exceptional heart and fun. Delegate from Iceland. Christmas party. The dramatic tension combined with a holiday setting created a whirlwind of an episode. Stanley Hudson. Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. Ryan Howard. Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. What line of work you in, Bob? Valentine's Day. I'm just a sucker for New York City. Here it is, heart of New York City, Times Square, named for the good times you have when you're in it. Drug testing. I had a blast analyzing this episode for the field guide. Very deep, very funny. 
Which is unfortunate because, as it turns out, Dwight finding drugs is more dangerous than most people using drugs. Casino night. This finale set the bar high for what a quality episode of The Office is. Two queens on casino night. I am going to drop a deuce on everybody. And the winner of the best episode of season two goes to Casino Night. And if I had a bar chart, this episode would be off the chart. Oh look, there's one. See, off the chart. Anyway, I went on about Casino Night for over 20 minutes. It's genius. Overall, my take on season two is that it's just great. Before the pressures of juggling fan expectations, dealing with actor contracts, and everything else The Office had to deal with throughout the years, season two hits right in the sweet spot of pure, genuine comedy. It's hilarious, it's optimistic, it manages the cringe, and it also gives us the feels. And so, to close us out, I'll see you next week with the season three premiere, Gay Winch Hunt.